With the release of Patan, there are four movies in the YRF Spy universe, and in this I'm going to be ranking them from the worst to the best. Leading up to the release of Patan, I went ahead and watched all of the YRF Spy universe movies for the very, very first time just so I can make this ranking for you guys. But before we get into my list, let me know your ranking for all four of these movies in the comments down below. And while you're down there, if you're new on here and you enjoy my movie and TV show reviews, reactions, and breakdowns, make sure to subscribe by notification on so you miss any time up a new video or I go live. Both always seeing more time. Let's get into it. I do want to give a quick warning, this video will be containing spoilers for all four movies, so if you haven't seen them, like this video and come back to it later. Starting off this list in fourth place for me is Ek the Tiger at a 2 out of 5 stars. This movie just isn't good. The action is alright, but all three other films elevate the action in every possible way. This does make sense though because it's the very first film in the franchise. Obviously this one as well as Tigers in the Hate were made to be standalone films and just a duology and so it makes sense why they weren't as evolved as the other movies, but this one at the end of the day, it's just not really entertaining either. The story isn't good, and just overall, there's a minimal aspects of this movie that are actually that good. I really like the whole like spy elements of this movie, and it feels more like a classic spy movie rather than all of the other movies. Maybe it's the time that this movie was made back in 2012. This actually felt like an undercover trying to just like lurk on people and get in information out of people. It wasn't as action based. Yes, there were one or two good action sequences, but those weren't really the forefront. There was two out of the entire runtime of the two hour and 30 minute movie. This movie was definitely more focused on the dialogue aspects, building up our characters. And with that being said, the characters weren't even that great. So the time this movie spends doing certain things, it doesn't really even pay off by the end in my opinion. And so that's why it's in last place. But with that being said, in third place for me is Tigers in the He. I actually think this movie is entertaining, unlike Ick the Tiger, but this movie still doesn't do too much for me. And like I said, I am going to be talking spoilers, so click off this video if you haven't already seen any of these movies. But obviously we do know that Tiger does show up in Bataan, and so for me, even though these movies weren't that great, I still had a big smile on my face when he ended up showing up in the movie because I enjoy the character himself, and that's due to Tigers in the He. I don't think the first one really built his character up as much as I would have liked, but I think in the 2017 version, you know, the action is evolved enough. You have enough special substance and style in where this character is actually headed that when he comes back in the most recent film, that's when you actually have a good feeling of like, okay, I'm liking that this character is back. I'm understanding this character more and I'm excited to see him with other heroes on screen. But this movie alone doesn't really do much for the character. Again, it builds him up to a level where I actually enjoyed his presence. I like Salman Khan as his character in this movie, but even like the first one, it doesn't do too much for me, even when it is a very dialogue based movie. This is also arguably the most gory movie out of all four films in this franchise, and you can really see that with the action. It's very detailed action. The choreography is absolutely amazing. Obviously, the two newest movies have the best choreography. Obviously, they've had evolved choreography from all the other movies, so it makes sense. Given it is a 2.5 out of 5 for me, most of the points for this movie do come from the story, which is really uncommon for the rest of this franchise. The story was actually decent, but where it lacks is, yes, it has action, but it's not really entertaining as a whole. Now, before I get into my top two, I do want to say number one and number two are very, very close for me. I was actually debating between these two for so long, and I'll tell you guys why in just a second, but my second favorite movie in the YRF spy franchise is War. This is obviously the 2019 Rithik Roshan-led spy movie. It's a really good movie, and I really, really like this one. My biggest gripe with it, though, is the story is very lackluster. And yes, this is a spy franchise. They throw these crazy twists and turns out of nowhere. And this movie, out of all of them, felt like they were just really throwing stuff out of their ass at some points, just in regards to twists that were happening, storytelling points that they were going through. It just wasn't really doing it for me. But on the other hand, the performance of Rithik Roshan was in arguably the best of the entire franchise. The action is top tier, but my favorite point of where this movie excels is the thematic elements. All of the other movies in this franchise are thematically hollow, even my number one spot. 
But what I love so much about this film is that it really understands that lock-in of brotherhood and you really get to understand the relationship between our two lead characters and I absolutely love that. I think the story towards the end of War is very, very cool. It had my jaw on the floor, but just in general, as we're going throughout, the twists were a little bit too wild for me. And obviously the number one spot you guys know, it does have a lot of twists as well. But again, War just felt out of left field. Additionally, there are very cool action sequences like the very first one with the one take with the actor Tiger something. I'm not sure what his last name is, but that action sequence is absolutely amazing. And there are so many great individual moments in this movie, but as a whole, it doesn't really come together for me again. Thematically, I think it works. I think it has what a movie like RRR has, which is very popular in the Western world, obviously, with the themes of brotherhood and loving and family and stuff like that. This movie feels like that in a certain sense, but it number one doesn't go deep enough into it and the story ends up convoluting a lot of those themes, which I feel like could have been explored way further. But obviously with that being said, my number one spot is Baton. I really, really enjoyed this movie. This is obviously the newest movie in the YRF spy universe. And so it's gonna be the most evolved one. You have three past movies to build off of. And what I really liked about this movie was how it took elements of a bunch of other things that I really, really enjoy. For example, the John Wick style of action, the, the handheld, almost one take, seamlessly cutting, making all of the action really feel engaging. I think that's where this movie succeeded. But on the other hand, why it's so close to war for me and why I feel like I could just interchange these movies at any time is because this movie feels very hollow. The story, it's a good story. I think the twists, like war, they're a lot more warranted and they actually feel like they have a good backstory behind them. But on the other hand, this movie, again, very hollow story-wise, but also thematically. This movie has zero themes. I, I genuinely just don't understand what the thematic purpose was behind this movie. Not every movie has a thematic purpose. Even looking at the bottom two movies on this list, they're just action-packed fun. And that's what this movie was. But now it comes down to what do I value? Do I value this amazing action that I absolutely love? And I'm obsessed with the style. And I love the way that they play out the cinematography and the action and stuff like that. Or do I prioritize thematic elements that still were very not prominent in the entire film with war. So for me, Patan outweighed those in those factors in my opinion. But again, going back to the action, I really, really liked it. There's just one scene I wanted to talk about in the very beginning of the movie where um, Shah Rukh Khan's character, he has, a, he has a shotgun and he's just blasting people, right? And the, they mount the camera on the shotgun as he picks it up. And then once he fires a bullet, it goes to a different camera. And as someone who's an absolute cinematography nerd, I love that shot so much. And just throughout this movie, there are so many cool moments. Again, spoilers for Patan. I've already mentioned the spoiler before, but obviously when Tiger shows up after the intermission, I really love the way that that whole sequence plays out and the way that they just dangle his scarf into the train. And then obviously he helps him fight. Also the post credit scene is really, really Really cool where Tiger and Patan are just talking and they're just talking about how they've been in this it like been fighting for so it's just it was a very nice moment to see these two actors come together and just have this chemistry on screen again it was just really really nice this is Shah Rukh Khan's first role since what like 2018 and zero he was in Brahmastra which I did watch that came out last year but he was a very minor role and this is his first leading role since 2018 and he comes back with the bang in my opinion he does a really great job in this movie um the acting overall though it's not that that great. Shah Rukh Khan's acting isn't that great either. It's just a matter of, I really, really enjoyed what they were doing with this movie in terms of the action. Again, very hollow story, very hollow themes, if any at all, but the action was just top tier for me. And I really, really enjoyed that. If I was to get nitpicky with the action, normally I don't like to dog on CGI and stuff like that. And I think this movie just, it went a little bit too out there and it makes sense. It's a very Mission Impossible-esque franchise, but even when War had these types of moments, it felt like the CG was a lot better. It was, even though it was unbelievable, the stuff that was happening, the CG made it look a little bit more believable in war but here if you if you thought it was cg it probably was and there wasn't really any middle ground it either felt super practical which i absolutely love which is like i would say like three of the action sequences in this movie but then you have like the other like 
three, four that all just feel too out of this world. And they don't really fit into this story that they're telling. But guys, that's it for my ranking on the four films in the YRF Spy universe. Again, let me know your ranking for these four films in the comments down below and subscribe so you don't miss any of my other movie and TV show reviews, reactions, and breakdowns. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.